Camino weather. That is something that a lot of people worry about, particularly on their first Camino. And that's what we're going to be talking about this week. How to check what the weather might be like, how to prepare for the weather, things to watch out for the weather coming right up. Okay, so the weather is something that you kind of need to check into and appreciate when you're planning your first Camino. Um, there's the obvious things, of course, like uh, what time of year are you going to go? Um, some people do walk the Caminos, the various routes, during the winter. Um, I've been tempted. I just don't like the cold that much. Uh, but some, some people say it's awesome. Obviously, the, the only thing you've got to be uh, very careful of is that there's not much accommodation open. Um, but most people tend to walk in the sort of shoulder periods in the spring, autumn, uh, and quite a few in the summer. So those are the sorts of times that we're going to be talking about. Um, and I'll talk briefly about sort of clothing and things like that as well. So let's assume that uh, we're going to walk in one of those sort of shoulder seasons, maybe April, May or uh, sort of September. Those are the most popular months, particularly for the Camino Francis, <coughs> excuse me, which is the uh, Camino I have most experience of. So one of the things I would suggest um, is to have a look at a couple of websites, and I'm going to show you those in a second, um, because you want to get an idea of not so much kind of what the day-to-day -day weather's going to be like, but more what the season is like. And I remember uh, somebody once said, uh, which, which I thought was a, a great saying, and that is pack for the season and dress for the weather. So what do they mean by that? Well, the weather can be fairly unpredictable, particularly in sort of mountain areas. Uh, and so you're never really sure if it's going to be sunny or raining. I mean, you, you might know a couple of days out, but you, you're not really going to know when you're planning your Camino, perhaps weeks or months out uh, or even years out. So what, you, what I'd advise that you do is to look for the sort of weather patterns at that time of year. Um, and that can dictate then what sort of clothing that you take. Now, before we uh, look at those websites, I'm just going to talk very briefly about clothing. Um, I tend to, I tend to walk April May. Um, I take, I would take the same clothing even if I was probably walking in summer. I might just drop an extra jacket off. Uh, even if I was walking in winter, I'd probably take an extra shirt. The point that I want to make about clothing is that you really have got to layer your sort of clothing system. Uh, it's all about lots of thin layers so that you can get flexibility in, in managing your temperature um, and keeping the rain off and so on. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, I tend to wear these very light merino shirts. Uh, this is a, a 150 weight, I think. Um, I think I've got a couple of 120s. That's 120 gram per square meter weight, very, very lightweight. I didn't wear these on my very first Camino, and I wish I had. I was wearing a synthetic tech shirt, and I was just sweating all the time. It's like wearing a plastic bag. These things are great in the cold and the heat, believe it or not. Um, you know, in, in 35 degrees, I would still wear this shirt. And no, I wouldn't wear a short sleeve one. I'd wear the sleeves down for sun protection. But, you know, it's so, they're so flexible. Obviously, I can just pull the sleeves up if I want to, if I want to get a bit of air on my arms or whatever. Uh, but these are great. Generally, I'm walking just in a shirt like this. Um, then what else do I carry? I carry, um, what do you call, a fleece. Uh, I've got a lighter one to use now, but this is a sort of an older style polyester fleece. When would I wear this? Um, very rarely walking. Uh, I would get too hot. Maybe for the first 30 minutes on a very, very cold day. So, you know, look, this is really lightweight as well. So. That just pops on over the shirt. It gives me some added protection. Hopefully I'm not screwing up the microphone here, putting this on. Um, just another thin layer. Uh, what I mainly use this for is actually in the evenings. So if it's cool in the evening and I'm going out for dinner, I might just throw this on for a bit of extra warmth. And then my third layer is a rain jacket. So just see if I can get this on without wrecking the microphone. Uh, a very, very lightweight. This is a Gore-Tex rain jacket. Um, really, really good. I've worn this on three Caminos. Keeps me bone dry. 
Um, the other use for the rain jacket is to keep the wind off. So very often I'm just wearing the shirt and the rain jacket if it's very windy. Um, but more often than not, I'm just walking in the shirt. So uh, let's now, I'm going to take this off because otherwise it's going to crinkle all the way through the video. Um, so in terms of clothing, it's all about layers. Um, that gives you lots of flexibility in sort of putting things on and taking things off and keeping your temperature just right. Okay, so let me jump on to a couple of these websites. Um, and what do I mean by, you know, check the season? Um, so let's look at this first site, and this is called timeanddate.com. Um, and what I've got on here is I'm looking at the annual weather for Pamplona, and it's showing uh, 1985 to 2015. What's the average temperatures like? And this is the sort of thing you want to look at if you want an idea of, you know, is it going to be hot, cold, wet, or whatever. So as we're looking here um, for the averages for Pamplona, I tend to walk in sort of April, May. Um, so that's really nice walking temperatures. This is in uh, degrees centigrade. Um, sorry, I don't really understand Fahrenheit. So somewhere between 6 and 17 is the average in April. That's perfect walking weather. Uh, May it starts to get warmer up to about 21. See in June, July it really starts to get pretty warm, 28, 29. Sorry, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. It's getting up into sort of 85, 90, I think. Uh, and then down the bottom, very interesting to have a look at the uh, precipitation or the rain. So April is actually the wettest month for Pamplona. Um, so I have walked April, May three times. Um, and the weather's been different every time. So in 2015, uh, I started out over the Pyrenees. It was glorious sunny weather over the top of the Pyrenees. Still some snow on the top. Uh, I, strangely enough, I generally set out on April the 28th, 29th. Um, snow on the top. The rest of my Camino, and I finished in the first week of June, was dry, warm, few hot days up into the 30s. Um, very little rain. I think I had a couple of days of rain early on. Uh, next one in 2016, a um, little bit wetter. Uh, and then 2018 was my last one so far. Um, and that was very cold and wet over the Pyrenees. Again, last week of April, very, very cold and wet. We, we didn't stop. <laughs> we just kept going. It was too cold to stop. Um, and so, you know, all the layers were on. <laughs> Uh, and perfect walking weather after that, actually, sort of, you know, mid-20s, low to mid-20s, uh, quite a bit of rain there. Um, so, you know, it does vary. So let, let's come back and have a look at this, this chart. That's going to give you a really good idea. And of course, you know, I'm looking at Pamplona here. You can put whatever you like into these websites. Uh, it's going to give you a really good idea of the temperatures and how wet it's going to be and so on. July and August, not very wet at all. Um, some of the things to look out for. Now, depending on the route that you're walking, I, I'm most familiar with the Camino Francis. Um, do be aware that you're going to go through kind of different weather systems, if I can put it that way. So if you're starting out in, in Saint-Jean, you're, you're going up over the Pyrenees, you're going into the mountains. Um, weather is always unpredictable in mountainous areas. Um, do make sure you check the weather reports before you set out from Saint-Jean. Um, the Pilgrim's Office there can give you up-to-date weather reports from the top of the hill as well. So, you know, it can be nice in Shenzhen, but, you know, three, four hours later, when you're sort of nearing the top of the Pyrenees, it could be very different. Um, and that's certainly what I found in 2018. It was lovely weather in Saint Um As we got up to the top, you know, it was strong, cold wind, rain. There was a lot of snow still at the top. So... Uh, so that's an area to watch out for. Um, other areas would be, uh, as you're coming out of Astorga, uh, Fonce Badon is up over another mountain range. You know, that could be sort of cooler up there. Uh, and then the final sort of mountain range you go over on the Frances is, of course, as you come into Galicia uh, and you're going up to Othebrero. Um, so a fair climb there as well. So that, that can be uh, inclement weather at the top of there. So I guess what I'm saying is look at what the seasonal weather is going to be like um, and, you know, pack and dress accordingly. Expect to, you know, experience all kinds of weather. <laughs> you know, you, you, 
I've had on, on a single Camino temperatures ranging from 10 degrees C to 35 degrees C, blazing sunshine, uh, pouring rain, you know, so just be prepared for all of that. I'll show you a couple more websites before we jump off here. So um, I haven't been on these for a while. So there's probably others. If, if you have uh, other good weather websites, do add them in the comments below. Um, one that I have used a lot, I'm just going to go sort of left to right through these. This is, um, I don't think it's a German one. I was going to say it's Wunder, Wunderground, but it's Weather Underground. So it must be pronounced Wunderground. Uh, and I've just put um, a weather station in Navarra here. If we put in Pamplona, for example, let's see what that brings up. Pamplona and Navarra. And uh, that's telling us, you know, what the weather is right now. What I find more useful. Um, yeah, I might look at this during the Camino. I, I'm often, you know, looking to see what the weather's going to be like in the next few days. Not that it really matters. I mean, you're going to walk in whatever the weather is. Um, but more useful, I think, is to look at historical weather patterns. Um, this one, I think this is a Scandinavian site, yr.no. Is that Norway? Um, that's got really good, uh, you know, daily weather. I thought it had historical, but obviously not. Um, here's another one, very common AccuWeather, uh, showing you, you know, the, the weather daily. So I've put up April last year, just to have a look and see what the weather was like uh, in that area last year. So, you know, you, you, I think the historical weather patterns are probably the most useful thing when you're pl planning. Uh, this is another site to view weather. Uh, and I actually kept this link because this is one of the passes uh, over the Pyrenees. So you can actually see what the weather's like up on the top of the Pyrenees. And I'll, I'll put these uh, in the description down below for you. So the Col de Bentarte, is that how you pronounce it? Um, I think that's the final Col sort of saddle before you head down into uh, Roncesvalles. So, you know, if you were sitting in Saint-Jean, you could check what the weather's going to be like next day going over the uh, Pyrenees. So the whole bunch of uh, different sites here. Here's another one that shows the uh, top of the Pyrenees above Saint-Jean. Um, so it's, it's fun, I think, to look at these and just look, you know, you might be saying, well, I'm going to walk in April. Uh, I wonder what the weather's like in Saint-Jean in April, generally uh, in Pamplona. I mean, it's very hard to predict weather, as you know. Um, and it will just give you some insights into what sort of weather that you can expect. Okay, there we go. Um, and, and maybe just to stress again at the end, it's the clothing, it's all about layering. That way you'll be prepared for whatever the weather is. Uh, and like I say, I would, I would wear and take virtually the same stuff, whether I was walking in summer or winter. The only things that would be different in winter, I would probably add another layer, probably a short sleeve merino. Uh, I'd have a heavier sleeping bag. Um, that's probably the only difference, to be honest. Uh, as well as the rain jacket, I have rain pants, so that they would be really useful in winter to keep the cold wind off and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, the, that's the beauty of the layering system. You know, you can cope with all kinds of weather. So just looking at my notes here, I think that's pretty much it. And I'll just leave you with that saying, pack for the season and dress for the weather. So if you have any questions about, uh, you know, coping with weather, do... Uh, put them down in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions, you've got any other great weather websites, uh, do share those links in the comments below. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now.